Happy New Year, my friend. How are you doing? It is officially January. We've officially gotten rid of 2020 and we are into 2021. Can you imagine? Um, this is Heather, by the way, if you're wondering who this is, I am the owner of Prosperity Flow Coaching. I am a coach and coach trainer with the Certified Coaching Federation. I'm also a member of Healthy, Wealthy and Wise, but we might get into that later. And this is the Build a Better Business series. And I've been doing these videos for, holy cow, almost a year. I'll let you know when the first year hits. It'll be pretty exciting. And these videos come out every week. And my intention with them is to share with you some ideas and tips that I've learned along the way of my career, my various careers, to help you actually make your business run better, right? So I'm always looking for your comments and suggestions. If you have any, please feel free to go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss any, right? And share with your friends. I'd really appreciate that. If there was someone you thought would benefit, go ahead and share with them. So this week's episode is about staying in contact with your customers. Maybe current customers, maybe potential customers, maybe people who don't even know who you are really yet, but you wanna stay in contact with them. And we, um, I'm in Toronto, that's where I am based out of, and we've just entered another lockdown. Um, we've been in one for a while, but they've just kind of spread it a little further and made it a bit bigger. And you may be tired of hearing about lockdowns at this point, I apologize, but it is a reality right now. And depending on what business you're in, you may be having a hard time figuring out how to stay in contact with your customers to keep that touch point. I mean, people are supposed to be staying at home and not going out and socially distancing. There seems to be a lot of online shopping and online everything going on, but um, it's hard sometimes when you, you're out of your normal routines and out of your normal way of staying in contact to figure out something new, uh, some way to stay engaged in a meaningful way. So normally when I do my videos, I have it all planned and I have what I have, um, I have pre pre prepared more extensively than I have today. What I'm going to say to you, I'll tell you why. And it's because I've been working on that new course that I've mentioned, which is now called the Money Confidence Collective. It's going to be an eight week online course. I'm super excited. It's going to be teaching you how to use your numbers to make you to allow you to have more powerful, um, powerful decision making within your business. So just briefly, I know a lot of people they don't even want to talk about their financials. They're like, oh my God, are you kidding me? Forget it. And they only do it when they absolutely have to at the end of the year, when maybe they do it themselves, or maybe they just hand it to an accountant to do it and they try to avoid it. And then the tax time and they just lose their minds. So my intention with this course is to teach you how to put in a simple way to keep track of it on an ongoing basis. So you always know the information you can set it up so that you never have to figure out where the money's coming from. You know the bills are covered. It doesn't come tax time and you're like, oh my God, how am I gonna pay my taxes, right? So it's all very basic step-by-step, -step, but powerful how to run your financials. So I've been working really hard on that, which means I didn't have tons of time to really lay out the way I usually do my videos. And I hope you'll forgive me because I'm gonna look at my notes every now and then because right now they're handwritten and usually I have them typed up. So today's episode is dun, 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 how to keep in contact with your customers when you're not supposed to come in contact with anybody, right? So there's a bunch of ways you can do this. And you know, some of them aren't new at all. Like how about newsletters, right? People still send newsletters, but when you send a newsletter, first of all, you need a email list, right? If you don't have an email list, you can start to grow an email list. So I'll talk about that in a minute, but first newsletters. So this is still a thing. When you're sending newsletters, think about it, trying to, instead of trying to sell them something, get them to book in, get them to buy something, try to share something interesting. Um, maybe share an education. So I know an artist who, when she's, I get her newsletters and um, I've only had, had one of her paintings, but I still like to get her newsletters because she just kind of, tells me in a conversational tone, you know, what's been going on with her and 
something about the way she writes them they're just interesting so even though I haven't bought anything I'm still on her email list and I'm still like she's still top of mind obviously because I'm thinking of her and one day down the road who knows when I'll think oh yeah that artist that would be a nice gift to some get for someone and I will just call her up and buy one of her paintings so when I send emails depending on which persona I'm using so my I have an online fitness studio where we have online Tai Chi classes so when I'm sending those emails out I try to send a weekly email talking about Tai Chi and just saying oh yeah and highlighting class that week if they suggesting say because a lot of people fall into routines of taking the same classes say hey have you tried this other class and do you know any friends who might want to take the class pass it on and my massage I mean usually I don't try to sell anything with my massage newsletters I just give them an update like I have to you know am I open am I not open for various holidays and just a hey have you tried this stretch if this you know if you have zoom neck <laughs> everybody has zoom neck have you tried this or this and just give them suggestions to help them stay healthy because in reality some of them can't come in right now right some of them are immune compromised they can't travel they can't get to you if you're a massage therapist and you just want to support them in any way you can so that when they can come back they'll be still thinking of you the whole idea of touch points is so when it comes time they're still thinking of you so newsletters don't be silly you don't have to sell stuff just stay in contact with them other ways to stay in contact with people how about that land of social media how about that right I know there's a lot of controversy some people hate social media some people refuse to go on social media some people like this one and I'm not going on that one because I don't like this person but in reality right now there's a lot of people on social media there's a lot of people you could be reaching on social media there's a lot of stuff you can do and right now Facebook and Instagram are kind of intertwined they're almost one in the same thing slightly different slightly different demographic of people on it but now the ease of when you post on one you can get it to automatically cross post to the other right um, you can do little videos videos sell hmm, videos attract what is the percentage I'm gonna get it wrong I can't remember something like 20% more or maybe it's 70% more some big number that impressed me videos will get more attention than just text because they see you moving they see you talking if you put um, the auto caps at the bottom then it's even better because then if they're somewhere where they can't listen to you they can watch your face and they can still read the subtitles right auto caps are the newest greatest thing then uh, so Facebook Instagram TikTok uh, it's a younger demographic right now I mean Facebook used to be the young demographic right and then all the old folks came in and took over and turned it into a commercialization of Facebook Instagram used to be the young people all the old people came in took over TikTok it might happen again I was complaining about TikTok with um, one of my nieces who's younger saying because I did have it when it first came out I you know I want to investigate to see if it's going to be helpful and <laughs> you might find this kind of funny I was watching it and when you first get on it they just give you random things to look at and I said to her I can't do TikTok because I can't unsee some of that stuff right it's just like now it's like I can't get it to go away but she said if you spend time and follow specific people and curate it starts to curate your feed but then my concern from a you know social standpoint is then you only ever see this stuff that you um pertains to you so you, you have a limited view of the world now maybe TikTok's not the place you want to go see a broader expanse of the world but that's just something that is always in my mind but anyway we were talking about customers right oops here I go off I'm off on another track so social media Facebook and Instagram ads they know how to target who you're after it doesn't have to be expensive you don't have to spend a lot you can limit it to you know these specific people you can even limit it to you know only in this six block radius and just provide do the same thing you do with newsletters provide them with information in fact what I do is I use a program called MailChimp so when I do my newsletters it automatically posts my newsletters out into my social media 
my Facebook and my Instagram. So then my newsletter gets spread around for the people who are interested in clicking on it and taking a, taking a look at it, even this. So I send this video out in a newsletter to my subscribers. So it is on YouTube for anybody who wants to find it. Plus I send it out in a newsletter. Plus I post it to my social media just to get a few more little eyeballs on it. Right. So that I can share with as many people as I can. So we have newsletters, we have social media. How about old school birthday cards or holiday cards? This actually this year was a good year to be sending cards. Um, a lot of people seem to just decide they wanted to go old fashioned and write actual cards and send them to people. And I thought it was really sweet. So, and my old chiropractor, every time, every birthday, he would send me a card to think, to wish me a happy birthday with a balloon in it. And if I ever referred anyone to him, you know, if they, he found out that I referred someone to him, he would send me a thank you card. Yeah, it's old fashioned, but it's sweet. And it's kept me in, kept him in my mind. It's like all of these ways to just a little touch to, it's like a little reminder. Remember Facebook pokes? I know they became annoying. So don't become annoying like a Facebook poke, but it's just like a, hey, hi, hi, remember me? Hi, remember me? So old school holiday cards. Now, do you have a, a list? And if you don't have a list, you could start one. I mean, what I do is because I have online booking, when they book, I ask them, would you like to join my email list? They can say no, that's okay. Or when they fill out the forms, back when we filled out paper forms, there was a little opt-in, you know, I send an occasional newsletter, would you like to receive it? And add them to the list. And over time, your list grows and you can actually grow faster. There's courses out there to teach you grow your email list. You know, um, I've subscribed to a couple of those, but something, and I had an idea, so you could give them an incentive for joining your email list. Something where you just say, you know, would you like to join my email list? If you join my email list, I will send you what a discount. Maybe you get a discount code. So in return for sub subscribe, like you, um, a lot of the online shopping that you do right now, whenever I go to a website, it says, Hey, join my email list and I'll give you 15% off. Why couldn't you do that? Right? It doesn't have to be, if you don't know the technical part of how to set that up in your, on your website, you can just have uh, a banner on your website that says, email me. I want to join the list and I will send you a discount. And you, then you just have to keep track of the discount, which is why you want to keep on top of your financial statements. Just saying. <laughs> so a discount would be nice and a discount, you know, then you are exchanging. It's like they're giving you their information, which is a valuable piece of information. If you know how to stay in contact with your list and in exchange for that, you're giving them something of value. You're giving them a discount, which will also encourage them to use your service or product, right? Because who doesn't love a good discount then? What should I do in all of these episodes? I don't know if you've noticed that ask for referrals. If you have a client that you, um, has come to you and they're so happy with you say, and don't be shy about it. Don't be embarrassed about it. Just say, you know, if there's anybody, you know, who would benefit, feel free to share, you know, you can even offer, um, referral incentives. Some people do like, you know, for every client you refer, I'll give you $10 off or something. Um, there's all kinds of ways to thank people for uh, promoting you, for advocating you, for coming to see you. And then you are still more top of mind and you keep going and you keep building that list. And eventually that list gets big enough that, you know, you send out those newsletters and then your book is full or your sales are rocking or whatever it is that you're working on. And that's a fabulous place to be, right? I think that's all I've got for today. That looks like a good start. Okay. My friends. So, Hey, if you don't know anybody who will benefit from this, feel free to share my video. Uh, if you want to join my email list, send me a message. I would love to set you up. And if you are interested, so seriously, I mean, I'm half joking, but I am quite serious. So I am launching the money confidence collective. The doors are open. will be open this week. Um, and the course will start in February. I've had to think about that for a minute there. The course is starting in February. It's going to be eight weeks. There may be a couple bonus week add-ons. Don't tell anybody. 
And for Founder Circle, I'm taking 10 people for the Founder Circle for the first launch because I want it to be super amazing. It comes with the eight weeks course plus we're going to do eight weeks of um, eight weekly one on like group coaching question and answer. Let's get together and help each other out. It's going to be amazing. I'm Heather. I'm the owner of Prosperity Flow Coaching. If you know anyone, pass on the video. If you like it, give me a like. If you have questions, send me questions. If you have comments, if you have ideas, send those to me. I can't wait to see them. I hope you have an amazing week. Stay safe, stay healthy, take care, and I'll see you again next week.